new important developments out of Gaza, as CNN reports, a new U.S. intelligence uh, information shows that nearly half of the air-to-ground munitions that Israel has used in Gaza in its war with Hamas since October 7th have been unguided, otherwise known as dumb bombs. As U.N. war crimes investigator Mark Carolasco noted, the numbers of dumb bombs versus precision-guided missiles, or PGMs, shows Israel taking a grim step backward in how warfare is conducted. Carlasco writes, historical PGM use in Iraq in 1991 was about 8 percent, in Serbia in 1999 was about 33 percent, in Afghanistan in 2002 it was 65 percent, Iraq 2003 66 percent, Libya 2011 100 percent, Gaza 2023 back down to 65 percent. This comes as new reporting from Al Jazeera claims that women and children and babies were killed execution style by Israeli forces while they were sheltering inside a UN school. Let's watch. New pictures from a school sheltering displaced Palestinians in northern Gaza show bodies piled up following an Israeli attack. Witnesses say a number of people, including women, children and babies, were killed execution style by Israeli forces while they were sheltering inside. During an interview with Sky News yesterday, Israeli ambassador to the United Kingdom vehemently rejecting the idea of a two-state solution. Let's watch. Is there still a chance for a two-state solution? I think it's about time for the world to realize the Oslo paradigm failed on the 7th but, of October and we need to build a new one. And in but, order to build a new one... But does that new one include the Palestinians living in a state of their own. Is, think, is that what it includes? I think the biggest question is what type of Palestinians are on the other side? This is what Israel no, realized in 7 October. The answer is absolutely no, and I'll tell you why. Well, then because how can there the be moment, peace? In, no, how can there be peace in the reason there is no peace Israel. is because the Palestinians... How could, with, without offering Mark, a state to Palestine, how Mark, can there be peace in Israel? Israel knows today, and the world should know now, the reason the Oslo Accords failed is because the Palestinians never wanted to have a state next to Israel. They want to have a state from the river to the sea. So the two-state solution connect. is dead. Why are you obsessed with a formula that never worked, that created this radical people in the other side? Why are you obsessed with that? Joining us now is Alan McLeod, senior staff writer and podcast producer at Mint Press News. Alan, thanks for coming on. Good to be with you today. So... What we've been hearing since October 7th is that uh, Israel's response to the October 7th attacks have been pointed, um, they've been targeted, they've been surgical, uh, that they have been taking the utmost care to avoid civilian casualties. This is a narrative that has also been reflected in statements coming out of our own government. How does this new report impact that framing? Well, to be quite frank with you, Brianna, I think it makes a mockery of this idea that so many <clears throat> Israeli and American po uh, political figures have been talking about for months now that they're taking every precaution possible to minimize civilian casualties or property destruction. Gaza, let's remember, is one of the world's most densely populated areas. Before the war started, more than two million people were cramped into a strip that was smaller than Mobile, Alabama meaning that Gaza actually has a bigger population uh, density than Chicago or DC. And so what we're seeing here with the dropping of enormous numbers of uh, dumb bombs, as they're called, this really constitutes a war crime. IDF spokespeople will say that they're devoting vast resources to minimizing the harm of, uh, to civilians, and that Hamas is really to blame because they're using human shields. And then the United States will say things like they're, they're concerned and troubled at the loss of civilian life. But really, are they? I mean, ultimately, we see the United States leaking these sorts of stories to sympathetic reporters in the mainstream media. But what they're really trying to do there is just distance themselves from Israeli destruction. Where are these bombs coming from? I think we have to ask ourselves. The vast majority of Israeli international arms purchases come from the United States. And the Biden administration has just uh, been rubber stamping a $14.5 billion arms deal to Israel. And that's aid, not even selling. So they're not even making a profit on this. They are giving the Israelis the weapons that they are using to carpet bomb Gaza. And that means that the American taxpayer is ultimately footing the bill here. And so I would ask the question of all viewers, does this mean 
that the American people are now complicit? Does this mean Biden is now an accomplice in these war crimes? I think uh, I think these are questions that everyone in the United States has to be asking themselves right now. Right. I mean, I, I take your point. It's not a choice, obviously, for the American taxpayers. They're having their money taken from them and given to this effort um, abroad. And I'm sure many, many people, even many people on the right, um, uh, object to um, being forced to finance other countries' defenses. Um, I want to ask you about that video footage we played. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is from Al Jazeera and hasn't been reported much elsewhere yet. Um, obviously, I would say that uh, if Israeli um, soldiers executed uh, civilians, they should be held fully accountable for that in, in the same way that Hamas terrorists engaging in the same should be held fully accountable for that. Um, uh, what can you tell us about what we're seeing here? Yeah, absolutely. I'm very glad that you're covering this story because uh, when it broke, I predicted that there really wouldn't be much coverage of this in the U.S., certainly from the mainstream corporate press anyway. And that is specifically down to who is the aggressor, who is the perpetrator, and who is the victim in this case. I think what we've seen since the start of this uh, conflict, uh, we've seen many, many Israeli claims, uh, for instance, the 40 beheaded baby scandal, uh, leading newspapers all around the world and leading news bulletins being the top story on uh, news bulletins for days and days with senior American figures coming out and denouncing what has happened based on actually not very much evidence. And now, two months later, I think most people can agree that that story was at least exaggerated, if not really quite fraudulent. And so this story that we are <clears throat> breaking right now, where the uh, Israeli military is said to, according to eyewitnesses who spoke to Al Jazeera, come in and uh, separated the men and women and children and executed them inside a school in northern Gaza, is uh, just an absolutely heinous crime if it is indeed proven to be correct. And I would very much welcome uh, as many investigations um, from international bodies and independent groups as possible so we can get to the bottom of this. We do have to treat this, of course, as an allegation, as we should treat everything in the fog of war. But these are the sorts of things that Palestinians have been um, uh, worried about for a long time and have been uh, mumbling about. And of course, if we go back in history, uh, Israel has uh, carried out similar massacres. I'm thinking about the Sabra and Shatila massacres of the 1980s, for example. And so, yes, we absolutely have to get to the bottom of this. But unfortunately, this thing seems to be getting swept under the rug by the corporate media in the West. Yeah, there's this uh, interesting irony that I think, right, it's, it's an allegation. It should be investigated um, and not simply taken as truth, but Israel has been obstructing international press from getting into Gaza. The press that's in Gaza is then characterized as untrustworthy because it is um, Arab press and characterized as biased um, by many people uh, on the outside. Um, you have, ironically, some of the, uh, I would argue, more heinous um, imagery being self-reported by members of the IDF. There was a video a self, self-reported of um, IDF members entering a mosque and using the um, prayer call uh, speakers to sing Jewish prayers. You can imagine that if the reverse were true, that there were imagery of Muslims going into a synagogue and taking it over and, you know, ca calling for prayer from inside. People would have been up in arms, um, rifling through women's underwear drawers, uh, pu putting prayer rugs in bathrooms and things like that. Though that imagery has not come because of outside journalism, but because uh, members of the IDF have been filming that and putting that um, up on social media themselves. So how do we, apart from relying on ID, the IDF self-reporting or um, the reporting of people who are uh, Gazans themselves on their cell phones or the handful of intrepid journalists who have not yet been killed by the IDF, how can we expect to get validation of some of the stories that are coming out of Gaza, especially since the restrictions on entering into Gaza are also being applied to humanitarian aid organizations that are also calling for this kind of review? That's a great question. <clears throat> and unfortunately, in the fog of war, these sorts of uh, questions will often remain unanswered. But one thing we shouldn't be doing is relying on corporate media, these uh, just a handful of uh, giant corporations own and control so much of what Americans see and hear if they turn on their television or open up a newspaper. Uh, you will see uh, a wider range of um, 
of views and opinions held on social media, for example, you will see things circulating there that you will never see on your television or in your newspapers. But ultimately, I think it's very important to try to uh, triangulate everybody's opinion by looking from a wide range of sources and realize that all journalists and all people, in fact, have their own biases and we shouldn't be trusting anyone. And in that way, we can start to understand what different sides, uh, what the different sides are saying and then take it from there. And also uh, to, to wait to, you know, before one weighs in with strong condemnation because, you, you know, often more information uh, comes out later to wait for more independent minded people to reach some conclusions or even uh, you know, some of, sometimes the most um, I think trustworthy is when so, even someone on who's ostensibly on the you know one side or the other nevertheless says, well, in this case, I think this is what happened in this video, or in this case, I think this is what you can trust it more because it's actually not um, self-serving. Um, Alan, thank you so much for joining us. That these are some helpful tips as we continue to parse what's happening in Gaza. Always great to be with you.